person struggling with the disease and feel empathy. Hosea wrote a song called Take Me to Church. I love that song. And, and I saw an interview with him and he's saying it's, it's, it's anti-establishment, it's anti anything that causes people to feel bad about who they are. Although the video says one thing, uh, but, but when I hear it, all I hear in every verse, in, in every, whatever they call that, the, the, the chorus, is church hurt. Mm -hmm. and, and so one of the lines says, uh, uh, something meaty for the main chorus. Mm -hmm. That's a fine looking high horse. What you got in the stable? We have a lot of starving faithful. Mm -hmm. they, that looks tasty, that looks plenty. <coughs> this is hungry word. Mm -hmm. You see, judging is much easier than loving. It's not our job to judge the decisions that people make. That's above our pay grade. Amen. But rather, our job is to discern how we can lift up those who have fallen, how we can find those who are lost, how we can restore those who are broken and heal those who are hurting. Amen? Amen. So, so now, unrighteous judgment can, can make us spiritually blind, first off, by our disbelief or unbelief. Verse 8 in our foundational text says, Therefore, the neighbor." And those who previously had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is this not he who sat in bed? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. And he said, I am he. Mm -hmm. See, the neighbor's unrighteous judgment caused them to be spiritually blinded by their suspicion and unbelief. They didn't believe that his sight was restored the way that he described, simply because they didn't believe that he was deserving to be healed. Or they started wondering if he was ever blind in the first place. They could not fathom the very notion that this man could be blessed by the Lord. Yeah. They were uncomfortable with him being anything but a blind beggar. Mm. Many folks struggle with this same kind of spiritual blindness today. Is there somebody in your life who you just refuse to believe that the gospels can or have reached? Mm -hmm. So... See, we often restrict people's positions because of their condition or, or because of what they've done in the past. And when we do this, we diminish the power of the gospel. Romans 1, 16 and 17 says, I, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel of righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Mm -hmm. The power of the Lord forever changed this man's life. The power of the Lord forever changed my life. Amen. 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 And instead of being suspicious, mm -hmm. we need to live by the faith that Jesus saved all who can believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Y'all have heard me say on more than one occasion, I meet somebody that's still calling me Michelle, mm -hmm. and I know where they're from in my life, and mm -hmm. in my timeline, amen? They from when I was out there in those streets, and, mm -hmm. and they find it incredible to believe that I'm a woman of God now. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So that's that keeping you in your set place, mm -hmm. amen? amen? Because of who your mama was, or because of what you did, amen? amen. But I stopped by to tell somebody this morning that we have to believe the saving power of the gospel of Jesus Christ is bigger than any condition, bigger yeah. than any position. We have yeah. to believe that there is yeah. simply no depth of darkness, uh, no sin or breach, that the Lord's power cannot breach. Amen, somebody. Amen. So instead of judging, we should be witnessing Amen. and preaching Amen. to that family member who's hard to love, to, to that neighbor who looks down on your religion, to those who behave bad because they don't know no better, because they don't know God. Amen. Amen. But we see them and we tisk and we get in our car and we come to church and we there sunbathing and mowing their yards or selling their hey, dope or hey, playing cards hey, on the front hey, street. Hey, when we should go over every Sunday. Hey, 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 Y'all on the door and say, would you like to come to church with me? Amen? Amen. Because we don't know who the Lord will use. That's right. And that's why it's dangerous to judge. Yes. We don't know who God is going to. History tells us that he uses the very same people that society condemned. Yes. The Apostle Paul wrote most of the epistles in the New Testament. But before he knew the Lord, 
He was known to be the biggest Christian persecutor there was. But one day, on the road to Damascus, when he was yet on his way to charge more Christians with blasphemy, Paul met the Lord, and he was forever changed. Mm -hmm. Don't be blinded by unbelief or your worldly suspicions, amen? Yes. Because if he took this big old hustle, <laughs> this big old drunk, amen? amen, and converted me to be a woman of God, he can do it. He can do, he can do it with it. anybody. Yes, he yes. can. From any level of darkness, amen? Yes. He's a big, mighty God. Secondly, unrighteous judgment can lead to blindness because of religion. Religion is a belief system. Those neighbors' unbelief in the power of Christ caused them to bring this man to the religious leaders. They just couldn't believe it. So they turned him in. First of all, you gotta understand, it was the Sabbath day. And the mere healing of this man on that particular day was against their law. So, so the Pharisees were focused on what they considered to be the breaking of the law rather than on the miraculous healing. And ironically, because this all took place on that Sabbath day, they then banned the man from worship. Mm -hmm. They also decided that Jesus had to have been a sinner because he broke the law and healed on their Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Their religion blinded them from recognizing the saving power working of God. Yes, yes. We still often judge like this in church, but we yes. do it unrighteously as well. We can become dependent on our traditions and heritage instead of the movement of God. Amen? Amen. Now you got somebody in here off the street. Who was I telling about the, oh, I think it was Sister Donna the other day. I did an internship at a church in Miami in Liberty City. Mm -hmm. Liberty City looking up at the ghetto. Amen. In the middle of that uh, neighborhood where that church sits, you got homeless people, you got drug addicts, you got prostitutes. And he was explaining to us that the prostitutes would come in in the early service and they would sit in the front row. It was a part of the, uh, the, the scheme or the scam or the hustle of the prostitute to not wear underwear. Hmm. Because if they got caught with the underwear down, they could be charged for prostitution mm -hmm. or solicitation. But if there was no evidence, mm -hmm. they could be So they'd come into church with these ministers on in the front row mm -hmm. Ooh, with their legs apart. Mm -hmm. And he forbade any of his officers to cloth on him. He forbade any of his officers to, to tell him to put it down and just go to another seat. Because what was most important is they were coming to the house of the Lord. As they were. Because this man of God, as I do, and I've been telling you guys, recognize that Jesus meets people where? Right where they are. Amen. Your digital ad could be right here. Just your business pre-worship service digital ad space today 